everybody, we are back with another review and today we are going to be reviewing a nice little handheld game. These are Centipede uh, little handheld arcades and they're pretty fun. Uh, there was a difference between the previous models, the 2015 model, and we have the 2017 model here, uh, which they're still releasing, so I guess into the 2018s uh, in this particular series uh, cabinet display. So uh, let's check these out and let's see uh, the differences between both of these, and we're going to take them apart and look at what's inside as well. So, without further ado, let's hop right into the review. So, the let's start with the 2015 model. This one um, is a little bit, if you look at the comparison with the newer model, this one's more like a full-on arcade cabinet style, and then we have this one, which is kind of like the half, half arcade, half handheld type game. You could even see... Uh, the deck construction here. This one's got more of like a flat deck, like an like an arcade style, and this one has more like a, a handheld, something that where you'd hold it like this um, to play the game. So, um, artwork wise, obviously traditional centipede type artwork on the sides of this um, from Atari. So, uh, let's turn it on and let's see how it, how it goes. We have a little joystick here. We have a start and we have a fire button, and then we have a meter for the. Uh, so when it starts up, obviously it comes to a normal screen that is kind of like a demo screen. You have to actually hit start to play the game. So once you have the game started, you can clearly see the style here that we have is pretty pitiful. It's very dark. You can't really see it. didn't really like the gameplay aspect of this and especially how horrible it is to see this now I imagine the displays are different this is more of like an LCD type display that's kind of like a handheld like a handheld poker game or like a tiger electronic type of LCD display screen I'm not sure exactly what that would be called but that's very similar to the quality that you would get in this particular handheld it's difficult to play it obviously because um, the Projectiles that you fire it has a sleep mode. Um, the projectiles that you fire in this, it's very difficult to follow them across the screen and the timing is very off with the, the button and hand placement. So with this one, we have a little bit of a different type of screen. This is more of like an actual classic uh, arcade type system. So this is the newer model, uh, the 2017, which they've redone and done a lot of different games for this particular style cabinets and it's like traditional centipede I mean you could tell they're mushrooms you could tell that that's a centipede you got the little spider going across I mean this is like centipede and this is fun to play you know what I'm saying like this is actually fun to play so like if you were to pick up both these they're both priced at the same price so um let's get this last so so again, this is a really nice handheld console in regards to the difference of the two of these. This actually has like a nice quality LCD display. Um, I would compare it in regards to its quality to some kind of like RGB type of uh, type of frame rate. It has kind of like a flicker. They could also make it like that using LCD technology. Of course, it's not RGB inside here. Um, so, but it's very lightweight. Obviously, the unit itself, but. I do like the gameplay on this one. The barrier to entry on both these, they're $20 each. So when you're going to buy something that's $20, why would you want to buy this one? Um, they definitely have increased the playability of this, the lookability of this. I mean, when you put this on the shelf, it actually looks like a nice mini arcade console. Like this is exactly what it looks like. When you have something like this, I mean, slim, that's nice, but... Um, it's kind of like half into the handheld, half into an arcade cabinet. Kind of not what I'm looking for. Um, doesn't look good on a shelf. I mean, it doesn't play great, so it kind of serves no purpose. And it's the same price, which is crazy. They charge $20 for this one uh, until they came out with this one when they could have just done something like this from the get-go. Now, they have tons of different variations. They got, like, Frogger, um, Defender. They got, like, Cuber, Pac-Man. They got Rampage. Um... They have a bunch of different uh, renditions in this style cabinet, and they started making these in, in 2017. Now, uh, the company is Basic Fun, I believe, that, that does these. Um, let me see what we got back here. We got 
Atari Interact, Basic Fun, a division of the Bridge Direct. So they're based out of Florida, uh, but these these new particular consoles right here, the uh, stand-up arcade ones, these are the ones you want to look for. Um, now I know for a fact they just released, uh, Rampage was the newest one that they put out, um, maybe in time for the movie or something, I have no idea, but um, that was the newest arcade uh, cabinet that they released. So they're still releasing them into 2018. Uh, their their series, the, they're numbering the series. Now I believe the Centipede one was number three in the series. I believe Centipede is number three in the series. But um, again, they're on, I think they're on 10 right now. But if you see one of these and you want to try it out, it's definitely worth $20, uh, especially if you like the particular game and you're nostalgic to arcade type feel for these Atari games. Uh, definitely something you want to pick up. 20 bucks. It's not a bad investment. But Something like this, I probably wouldn't advise. Even they're the same company. Uh, it's just the older rendition. Um, they still sell these. I mean, I bought this at a store. I believe I got this at a Target. Um, they still have these on the shelf. So if you do have a choice between the two of them, don't get the skinny one. Get the get the fatter one um, between the two of these models. Uh, they have. I know they have Pac-Man ones still on the shelf. So don't get duped with the older ones. Make sure you get the upgraded display, the upgraded playability. And uh, let's hop right into seeing what's inside these. I know some of you are probably looking forward to seeing that. So we'll get the inside of this puppy. We'll do the white one first. I imagine there'll be a battery inside the, or a screw inside the battery compartment. So we'll do that. And let's grab this. I'm going to grab a little bit better screwdriver and help speed up the process here a little bit. So, little well, screwdriver was alright, but you just don't have the leverage that you have with a longer screwdriver so right, let's pull that one out let's get the battery door open pop out these batteries and we have no further screws nothing in the battery compartment which is nice so we'll loosen this up now as you did notice uh, there are four of these notches here those actually are not to hang up on the wall. I mean, I guess you could hang this up on the wall, but that's actually how the packaging comes off. There's uh, some kind of plastic inserts that they use for security measures. So that's not something that's meant for you to hang up. I mean, I guess you could if you really wanted to. So on the inside here we have, that's their logic board right there and all the, all the buttons hooked up with their little speaker. Um, you have some kind of a button back here. Not really, this is a reset button. So we have a, right here we have the, where it says right under it, it says reset. I don't know if you can see that the, with the light, but it says reset right there. Um, obviously the processor is under that black sludge right there. And then we got a nice little ribbon cable that connects everything together, which nice and compacts our LCD display out in the front. Now this is the um, older model, the older version um, of this game. And uh, we're going to see if it's basically the same setup on the inside of the newer one. So let's move all this out of the way and let's hop into taking apart the newer one. So this time we're not going to try to go into the battery door. We're just going to take off the back panels uh, and see what's inside. So a lot of times these screws don't want to really come all the way out. Now I have not taken these apart yet. This is the first time that I'm taking this apart. Now it looks like there's actually um, a depression here. I just noticed there's another one right here too. So the reset button I imagine is probably accessed by using like a paper clip or something. But I imagine that's just a regular reset. We'll try, we'll hook up the white one and we'll hit the reset button on that. Uh, let's see if we can. We unscrewed everything properly here. Hmm. 
Hmm. Interesting. That screw doesn't want to come out. Well, anyway, that's we're gonna take off the battery door, and we're just gonna pull it out. That's the the button that fell is actually the that's the reset button. So that's actually going to depress over that and press the reset button for. But very similar in regards to how it's set up, but very different in regards to its chipsets and the the boards. You can see this one has uh, far more components on the back of this board um, than the other one did. The simplicity is definitely more in the other one this one has a little more com complexity in regards to how it's set up and you can obviously see in the gameplay the difference uh, between the two uh, and how well, look at how bad those solders are those are like extremely weak but um yeah the complexity of the board is definitely different but this is just that's what's powering the whole the whole game so you have one rom simply just on this board i imagine you, if you knew a way you could probably hack um the board and be able to put maybe more ROMs on that. Uh, no idea, but uh, yeah. So this, we're gonna put this back in its little holder there. Slide that right on there, there we go. So, uh, in regards to both these two consoles, uh, definitely there's a big difference in, within two years of development of these. And the re-release of this nice new, larger stand-up tower one is awesome. Uh, so I definitely would recommend over the two of these to get this one again, uh, and the stand up, the stand up standalone consoles are really nice in regards to their shelf uh, viewability and their functionality um, as an actual handheld game system. It's not something you're just going to put on the shelf and never use it. It's something you can put on the shelf, take it off the shelf, and then use it whenever you want and have a good experience on it. And you don't have to have a full on arcade cabinet to get that type of gameplay experience um, and nostalgic quality from uh, playing you know, your handheld centipede game or any other arcade series that they have released. So um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more content like this, subscribe to the channel and have a great rest of your day.